Welcome, everybody, wherever you're at around the world. Um, if you want to drop a note in the chat of where you're from, we'd love to see where that where that is. As we get started today, we're going to be talking about the automated test framework and some of the updates that are coming through with that. Uh, today, our, our guest speaker is Yinka Ogini, and we'll hopefully be joined by John Lynn. My name is Adam Stout, and we all work on the outbound team, uh, outbound product management team covering the ATF and platform in general. As we're going through today, uh, we may have a few forward-looking statements, so I want to make sure we've all read the safe harbor statement. Please don't make any purchasing decisions based um, on things that are not yet released and what we're talking about. Where our focus is on what's coming out or what came out in Washington um, and before, uh, but in case we do let anything slip out, uh, please don't make any purchasing decisions based on that. If you're interested in what we're talking about today and other things related, there are several other webinars in our Academy series and live at live at ServiceNow. Um, go ahead and grab this, uh, this QR code or the, or the form you registered on in the community, and you can get access to all of those. Uh, this session is being recorded, and we'll be posting it on YouTube and into the community uh, probably in a week or so. Um, but as we're going through today, we do like this to be interactive, so please feel free to uh, drop your questions in the Q&A panel so we can make sure we answer them, or any comments you have, uh, feel free to put those in the chat as well. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Yinka to give us an update on ATF. Thank you, Adam. Um, let me share my screen right now. Um, hi, everyone. Um, and good morning to you from wherever you are right now. Um, so today's goal will be that we're going to understand what's new in ATF and um, how we can improve your testing strategy, as the case may be. And we're going to go over some of the changes that happened within ATF and um, some of the new um, features we're adding to ATF in Washington, D.C. Um, like I said, our agenda today is going, we're going to go, go over the update, then we'll, we'll do um, you know, a couple of demos, and we'll also share some of the additional resources that are available to you for ATF. Um, if you want to catch up on some of the uh, um, previous um, videos or previous academy on, on ATF, you can use the link down here, which shows um, the the ATF test generator and cloud runner. This was the academy we, we recorded during um, when we launched um, ATF test generator and cloud runner. So this is more like um, a build up on this particular um, series. So um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna go over test generator again for some of the um, new customers or new users of ATF or new users on the service now that don't know about the, the feature called test generator. Now, um, as you can see on my screen right now, what we have for test generator is an intelligent tool that generates ATF tests by analyzing your instance behavior. And when we say instance behavior, this is a tool that goes over your table and uses the last six months, the last six months data you have on your table to generate um different tests based on what you can understand. Basically, you're saying, oh, do you want to validate? Um, some input, or do you want to create some inputs? So that's what the test generator does for you. And um, one interesting thing about this is that it doesn't come with the, with the family release. It's available on store. So what that means is that you don't have to wait for your next upgrade or for, for a new family release before you have test generator on your instance. And um, one interesting um, fact about this also is that for you to run the, the test generator on cloud, like you need to uh, it can be executed on the service now um cloud infrastructure so when let's say for example you want to schedule the test or you want to run a test overnight when you're, you're not with your device you can always schedule um this test on cloud runner what that means is that you can run your test without having your device open um i'm going to go a bit into test generator some of the, the interesting so the, the test generator on cloud are two two different um, feature in one, in the sense that the, the test generator is is run on on top of the cloud runner. The cloud runner is an infrastructure on its, on its own. So I'll talk about um, test generator a bit just to give us some some insights. Um, the first time we released this was on Tokyo Patch Five. So for, for some of the old customers, you know about this, and you can also attest to how we've been able to improve on our first version of test generator. We've added a couple of um interesting updates which i'm going to share later on for the folks that um, probably stopped using it the first time we released it 
Um, I mentioned also earlier that this is an intelligent tool. We we try to we're trying to automate test creation or auto, test authoring as much as possible. And with this tool, we're trying to say, oh, you don't have to bother yourself with manual tests. You have an automated tool that can help you generate different edge cases when it comes to 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 your tables or your records or your forms, as the case may be. Um, another interesting aspect of test generator is that we been able to expand our coverage beyond just um, tables. Right now, you can decide to run or to generate tests based off of forms uh, and also service catalogs. You're going to see some of that later in um, the demo. Then for the cloud run on, um, this is an interesting aspect of, of the test generator and cloud run feature itself. We, we've had customers talk about um, headless browser and how it's, it's difficult to set up and how it's also hard to maintain. We had all these concerns and we come up with, with what we call the cloud runner. So with the cloud runner means you are running all your tests on a service now infrastructure. And one thing you have to understand is that I know questions have come up about, oh, does the customer data get copied on service now infrastructure? No, it doesn't. What, what we do is we, we take a snapshot of the past six months for for when we're trying to generate the test and we create tests based off of that. We do not copy your data. We have um a couple of links that will tell you um our data policy when it comes to cloud runner. And and, and hey, yes we have a question about, about test generator and the data. Uh, so the question that came in is that uh, test generator uses actual data. Uh, which we just discussed is can I use test generator on new applications I'm creating a new custom app? Yes, you can. Um, as as long as the the custom app has a table you you're referencing, test generator can help you generate that. In fact, we we've we've gone ahead in the latest update. We've gone ahead to to ensure that you can actually save a preset for the scope of the application you're you're generating, like you you want to generate test for. So regardless of what you're trying to create or, or, or build, as long as the application has a table that we can access, you can always generate based on that. But it will need data. Uh, yeah, so exactly. It will, it will need data. So if you don't have enough data, as, as long as you have some data for it to work with, you can always generate tests. So, so there's no restrictions on custom tables or out-of-the-box tables or custom scopes or out-of-the-box scopes or store scopes. There are no restrictions there, but we do have to have data to generate the tests on. So if I have a brand new application, it's not going to create feature tests for me. It's going to do regression tests. And if there's no data, then we won't be able to generate valid tests. And if I have just a couple of records, the test may not be any good. So it's more of a go forward. That's correct. That, yeah. that's, that's why I said earlier that um, it's, it analyzes your, your, your instance behavior. And for you to analyze your instance behavior, you need a couple of data generated using the, the application. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, interesting question. So um, uh, we've also had comments from customers that, oh, when they install um, Test Generator, with the, it comes with two default lanes, that's what we did. But they've, they've, they found out that oh, over time, they need more lanes or they need more, more trade, as the case may be, for them to run different tests. Let's say, for example, you're trying to run seven tests if you have the two default lanes, the seven tests will be queued one after the other. So that means one test is running on the first lane, second test is running on the, on the second lane, and they get queued up so they can run. So um, we 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 decided to say, oh, for you to have more parallel tests running at the same time, you can have, you can get additional lanes because it comes at a very low cost. So if you're interested in that, you can always reach out to your your account executive or your essays to help you, then we can go forward from that. So um I I think I mentioned some of the the updates we've, we've done on test generator and cloud runner. And I just want to run you through some of the things we've done. Um the 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 one point one point one was the version we released after the first one back in November 2022. And we had some feedbacks where we had to fix a couple of bug and stability fixes did that. But if I'm, I'm going to touch on the, the major one or some of the interesting um, updates we, we've had so far. In May 2020, we added the the ability for you to generate tests based off of scope, like 
or this is the application you want to generate a test of. Then we also um we notice some some discrepancies with the progress bar. So we also fixed that in May 2022, the 1.26 version. Then in August 2023, 2.04 version, you can find all this in the, in the version history when you go to the service down store. We eventually gave support for service catalog, and this is an interesting tool. You can you, you can go try it out once once after this um, academy is done. Um we also fixed a couple of stability um improvements or and bugs also. Then in November 2023, which was a couple of months back, we we, we gave the ability for you to do something called condition builder. So for example, let's say you are interested in having a select number of users to be used to generate tests or to be used to validate a couple of tests, you can use the condition builder to select to to, to limit the users you, you are interested in. You can also use the condition, condition builder to tell you oh, to define the tables you want to create this test within. For example, if you're interested in a couple of incident management table or some change management table, you can use the condition, condition builder to, to set this limitation. Then also in February 2024, we did we we on this customer said oh they want to be able to to um generate tests from previous um what's it called previous scope they, they created. So we gave the ability for you to be able to save save your preset in a particular manner. So when you go up there, when you go to the the, the app, you would see the ability for you to save. So when you save that, what that means is that if you're trying to run the same um set of tables again or the same set of users again or the same service catalog um items also again, you can go back there and just generate the test again. My manager likes to Adam likes to say, oh, um, test generator is a disposable um tool, like disposable generates disposable tests. So let's say, for example, the past six months, there is a different um instance behavior that you that some some of your customers have done on 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 your application you can always go back to that scope you created earlier and generate a new one with that it if you it will analyze the new changes or the new validation that has been done and create something similar to that and and one interesting thing is that the the latest version of the the test generator and cloud generators has a backward compatibility to tokyo patch 5 so if you're on tokyo patch 5 you can still use um the 2.25 version. And uh, yeah, we have a couple questions um that that came in. Um the first related to some of the stuff we've talked about. Uh and the, the first one has to do about moving just want to clarify with the update sets. When you generate tests um and move them between instances, do you do you or can you move your test between instances uh, via update sets or some other method, or do I have to generate tests on each instance? If I have my my dev and my QA and my staging, do I have to generate the tests on each three of, on all three of those instances, or can I move the tests around? Yeah, interesting question. You, you, can, you can actually move the tests around, but if those in instances share the same table or the same data set, there is no point moving the test around. You can always just generate again based off of the scope. Like you already know the, the you, with, the, with the condition builder, you already know the users you're trying to limit to, limit it to. You also already know the 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 tables you're interested in, so you can use that same scope on your other instance. But you can move the test around. So if I have a, so a scenario, I might I, I might be in. Is that my staging instance? My my the last instance before prod has all my data is a clone. I might generate my tests on that and then move them down to my dev that has a lot of clean data, um, or that has a, uh, has a lot of yeah that, that that has a lot of sanitized data. Doesn't have my full data set. So you may want to generate. You want to generate the tests on the instance that has the most data. If they all have the same data, it doesn't matter. And if they um, uh, and, and then move them down. So I might generate them in one instance, move them to where I'm going to do most of my testing on my dev instance, but it's whatever makes sense for you. And it's really similar to where I put my ATF tests. Um, but you do, you really, really want to have data. Um, yeah. 
that the, the better your data, the, the, the tests that you generate are only as good as the data that you give it to generate the tests. Um, and I'll plug into it that I definitely do call these disposable tests. You are going to regenerate them from time to time. I'm not necessarily going to regenerate them every day, uh, every week, but probably after every, every when my data changes, my process changes, because there's no point in me to get, feeling good about the data that this works for my instance from two years ago. I want it to work on my instance now. I want it to work for this upgrade, for this process. Um, so don't feel bad about throwing away these tests and regenerating them. We don't charge for generating tests. It, it takes a little bit of time depending on your data, but the, you know, I run them, I'll keep them for a bit, throw them away and get the new set. These are about fingerprinting your instance and regression tests, and you want to generate them as your data changes. Yeah. Uh, a, couple, uh, a couple other questions. Um, can I use these to test portal pages? So um, right now we are expanding support for service portal. So um, at the moment you can't use it to test portal pages. Uh, well, the, and I'll clarify, the test generator doesn't work on portal pages. We don't generate tests for portal for service portal today, but the, the cloud runner does run everything, uh, does run anything ATF can run and ATF can test service portal. Yeah. So it's, it, we don't have auto generation yet, but everything else we're talking about today does run with service portal. So you, you, you just think of your cloud runner as a different um, virtual mach machine, machine hosted on a different device so you're not trying to run your own LS browser but if you have service portal tests that you run typically on ATF you can run them on cloud runner but you can generate um service portal tests and and Yinka I I don't know off, know off the top of my head do does test generator and cloud runner work on uh personal developer instances yeah it does uh oh it, it doesn't it doesn't because um the 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 infrastructure we're using right now does not have um that capability right now, so it doesn't run. You can't run um test gen and cloud run on on, on PDIs yet. Yeah. Okay, I think I know that's still something we've been we've been talking about how to do that. Um, ATF does run, so most of the other things work. Test generator doesn't really make sense in a lot of ways for a PDI because you need to have data, and generally you don't have real data in, in PDIs. Um, so, but it does not work if you're trying to get familiar with it. It doesn't it doesn't work quite yet. Yeah. All right. I'll let you go <laughs> the rest of this and then we'll we'll I'll interrupt you with some more questions. Yes, perfect. So um I, I think I mentioned this earlier also about um getting national lanes. If you look at the the, the there's a cable article down here, and with this cable article, we we've had instances where customers say, Oh, they want 10 additional lanes, and we created this cable article for customers to know what are the limitations to having additional lanes like for example um what's the number of nodes you have on your instance that will determine if you can go up to 10 or 15 but the highest the highest possible you can go up to is about um 20 lanes so you can you can have 20 lanes on your instance and run your test as fast as possible so um you can use this kb article just to get more insight into how this works Then so um now we're we're here to talk about what we have for Washington DC release. So um this is a much talked about um topic and we finally finally came up with this in Washington the support for configurable workspace, and right now we we did some analysis and we found out that customers mostly interact with the forms. And we're trying to prioritize, okay, this is what customers need first. We want you to be delighted with ATF. So we we, we gave support for forms for configurable workspace. And if you look at the, the, the lower part of this image, you can see all the test steps that are supported within configurable workspace. Um, later for the, for the next release, we're, we're trying to give support for least because that's the, the next use component within the within configurable workspace. But, um, um, uh, this is what we are for for Washington DC, and some of the interesting thing about this is that it's activated by default. Like it's you don't have to say you want to go download something; it, it comes with ATF by default. So once you you have you have upgraded to Washington DC, you can run or you can generate tests that are for configurable workspace and forms. 
And I think the next thing also is um, we, we, we're, we're trying to enable test designers to test customizations beyond service now legacy UI, the core UI. And some of the interesting things we've done on 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 um next experience, we want you to be able to test them. We want you to be able to to see um see some validations, understand what customer what what you are trying to see, get insight into how your test is being run. So um I'm I'm gonna show um after this I have a demo where we run through how this works. Then you can ask some questions if you if you have them. Then um our next major feature on HCF is what we call the performance testing. And this is an interesting aspect of this because um as you both know, as we all know rather, um regression tests can be can 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 be a bit tricky in the sense that when you make customization or when you make changes to some of your pages, um the chances of them causing a bit of delay or increasing the, the test time is is um is, is I so with, with performance testing we we use this tool to help you pinpoint or understand okay this is a particular component that's causing a bit of delay in my test if your test is used to run for like like let's say 30 seconds and all of a sudden you notice your test is running for five minutes or running for two minutes you can use this tool to to pinpoint what's causing the the extra lag in test um, execution and also by default, this comes with the with the Washington DC release. You can always find this in the in various parts of of it of ATF. Looking at this image right now, we have it in the top right corner. We also have it beside their own test in the middle of the image. So there are different ways to to um to um run this. And one interesting thing is you can only run performance tests on Cloud Runner because we need um the way this works. Once once you see the demo, you understand why we. We are, we are limiting the ability for you to test that on Cloud Runner. Um, the, 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 when you run the test, it runs about 11 times, and we do something called warm up on Cloud Runner, tries to ensure oh, the first run is, is okay with no each, and we now run the next 10 on Cloud Runner. So, it, it, for you to run performance tests, you need to have installed Cloud Runner and ensured you've activated or selected a cloud user or, or an admin user for that. Um, so the 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 whole point of the the whole gist behind this is we're trying to help you discover customization based performance issues, which are often ignored by developers. And um, they're mid. They're they're not observed. Ignored is a harsh word. <laughs> they care. They care. But uh, we want to identify those, right? Let's let's find it before we go to prod instead of after. Yeah. 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 That's correct. So I, I think I would also want to mention that this we should not um confuse this with load testing. This is not this is not a load testing tool. This is strictly performance test. You want to see um how your customization is is improving, how the how how your customization is improving or, or the delay that is that is happening within your customization. All right, I think and now we have time for demo and we can take some questions before the demo. Yeah, Adam. Well, I, I'm just going to add um, one or uh, a couple things. One, my Q and A just actually cleared out. If you asked a question that I hadn't that we hadn't responded to yet, can you ask it again so we make sure we cover it? Um, if you had asked in the last last couple minutes, if you could just put it again, if we didn't do it, uh, there was a question that came in about um, uh, recording test recording, and I, uh, with Mark, I think you you asked a question about test recording. We don't offer that today um, in the world, uh, under our safe harbor, in the world of AI, we're looking at kind of how to jump over recording. Uh, there is an app in the store, uh, app in the store, there's an app in share that the, the, I forgot the name of it, but there is a test recorder for ATF. It records ATF tests. It makes, it make records what you do, makes ATF tests. Uh, that's a third party not supported by, by ServiceNow, but it creates ATF tests. Those tests are the exact same tests, and they will run in Cloud Runner. They are, they'd be usable in, in the performance testing. And the other note I was going to put make it about the performance testing. Uh, Yinka talked about it, but it's uh, only available for Cloud Runner. And, and one of the big reasons for that is because that way we don't have to worry about network issues. 
since Cloud Runner is hosted in our data center, we're going our data center, ServiceNow data center to ServiceNow data center where your instance is. Um, that works uh, and we don't have to worry about uh, any network problems before then. So we're more likely to catch real performance issues rather than just some network latency somewhere between, between you and our data center. Um, and the, uh, uh, the there was comment in there about the test recorder. Yeah, the test recorder is not ours. I, I it's been around for a long time, and I, I'm not sure on how active it is. I could believe that it's not active. Um, we are working on solutions uh, to kind of go beyond that. There's some really really good things that we'll be talking about later this year, hopefully, as as everything comes to fruition. Um, but I definitely hear you loud and clear that uh, a recorder uh, is important. Um, I don't have a poll open on that, but we have uh, quite a few attendees in here, and I'm going to keep the chat from this. So if you would like to see an ATF recorder, if that's important to you, just put that in the chat, and then we will be talking to our, our, uh, our product development team a little bit more closely. And if, and if the more evidence we have and the more people asking for it, the more likely it is for us to, to get that prioritized. So if you're looking for a recorder, let me know in the chat, and we will follow up on that. Uh, Okay, and then we have a couple of more. Um, oh, one quick question before before the uh, before the demo about the the test data for the gen for test generation. So we mentioned six months. Is there a way to change that um, to, to to tune that? Could I make it three months, or could I make it uh, twelve months, for example? So I, I not I think that's an interesting question and something we'll look into. We right now you we, we don't have the ability for you to to change that value or change that number. But um, we can look into our, our, what's the possibility of that and why we should do that. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm ready for a demo. Okay. I think our right. audience is as well. Let's go. Good. Um, let me pull that up. Starting here from my instance homepage, I am going to navigate to the ATF test module. I'm going to click the new button to create a new test, and I'm going to go ahead and call it whatever I like. From here, uh, we'll arrive at the standard ATF test form. I'm going to go ahead and add some test steps. So we'll click add a test step. And what I want to do is I want to open an incident form in service operations workspace. So we'll start by searching for the open a new form step. Can I click next? Now here is probably the most important part of this demo, which is the ability to choose from different workspaces or different versions of the platform UI. By default, we have selected here in form UI standard UI, uh, which basically refers to any pre next UI experience interface, uh, sometimes called UI 16 also. Uh, now in this case, I actually wanna choose service operations workspace. You can also note that there are other workspaces available here to select from. And for table, I'm going to go ahead and put incident. Then I'll submit to create the step, and we can see the step has been added to the test. I'm going to go ahead and add a second one, and now I want to fill out this form. And so the step to do that is set field values. Note that the mandatory fields have already been populated, and I'm going to go ahead and just fill these out with any value just for demo purposes. Finally, one more step here, I want to submit my form. I'm going to click Submit a Form. I'm going to confirm that the step will assert that the form is submitted to server successfully. You may notice that in the subsequent steps, this field is already filled out. We actually fill it out using the value from the prior step, which means if you set it to a workspace in the first step, you can expect that all subsequent steps are going to automatically have this populated to the uh, matching value as the first step. From here, after my form has been filled out and submitted, I want to click a UI action. And what we're gonna do is we're going to click the assign to me action. And what this does is it's going to assign the instant to my active user, which in this case, because this is kind of a trivial test, it's just gonna be system administrator. So I'm gonna go ahead and select assign to me. Uh, when selecting UI actions, make sure that you choose one that's relevant for what you're testing. So in this case, this is a service operation workspace version of this action. I'll submit this step. And finally, I'm going to do one final step, which is to a field values validation 
to assert that the assigned to value on the form is set to my current user, which is system administrator. So from here, we can go ahead and click run tests to bring up our browser picker. And in this case, I'm just gonna run the test locally. And what we're gonna see is we're gonna see the instant form opened up in service operations workspace. We will see it populate short description and caller. We're gonna see it submit. And finally, we will click the assign to me button and validate that it is assigned to system administrator. And it actually goes pretty fast. And going back to our test form, we can see that the step or that the test did indeed succeed. So that's an example of a very uh, kind of basic trivial use case in Azure Workspace. Okay. Um, do we have questions for that? I'll just note as we're going through. So we we ran that in the interactive mode, which is the the classic mode for ATF, where we had a we ran the test from our local browser. That's really important. That's not going away because if I need to test it with specific plugins that I have, or I need to test it with Safari or Edge, that's great. Today, our Cloud Runner runs on uh, on Chrome. And what would happen if I had run that with Cloud Runner was I would have only seen the first tab, which shows my progress, and the actual execution would have been done in the ServiceNow data center uh, on our on our browsers. Uh, but effectively, it's the same thing. It's just a matter of whether you want to use our browsers and want to have a tab, or, or you want to have a tab open and run on what you're looking for. Run this very specific browser configuration. Yeah, that's right. I'm looking for the okay. comment to see if we have any questions before I move on to the next um, demo. I don't see any questions coming in, so I think we can go on to the next demo. I think this is the really exciting one for everybody to see. Yeah. Um, and again, feel free to put in questions along the way, whether we're about this or anything else we've talked about today. Yeah. All right. Oh, so hey, one one question came in. Is it possible to log the result? So um, it, we we all we always have test logs within um, ATF, and um, once your, your tests have been run, you would see a different tab, a different button that shows you all oh, the test log. So you can all, all the tests run on ATF are always logged. You can always see the test log after you, you're done running the test. And the default is to take screenshots when there's failures. Um, there's an option. Some In some cases, I have to have screenshots for everything. Uh, there's an option on how to do that. But when a test passes, the results, the, the, the there's a log that it passed. But we don't keep every step along the way. Yeah. Uh, or it, it just says pass, or it's pretty simple. But particularly when there's failures, that's when you will want to save that screenshot and go back. Um, and then what you'll do is go back. And if that's not enough, you can debug the test. You can persist the results to really drill, drill into it. But generally, one of the great features of ATF is when you run the tests, you don't have to worry about leaving a mess behind you because it will roll back the, transac the transactions and remove, it'll undo the things that it did as part of the test. Um, which is what we want the vast majority of the time, but I will normally run my suite. Anything that fails, I'll go look at the screenshots, I'll go look and see what was wrong, and then I'll generally debug those, keeping the, the data so that I can dig into it to really understand. Sometimes the failures are really easy to understand. Screenshot tells me, ah, it's broken, I can go fix it. Um, but there is the debug mode now as well, which was added uh, in the not too distant past, uh, which will allow me to keep that data persisted and not roll it back immediately. So I can go dig into it, find the real problem, fix it, and then run my tests again and know everything that is happy and smooth. That's correct. Oh, and yes, you definitely don't need to be there for the running of the test. Cloud, uh, in the past, you didn't need to be when you were using local your local browser. You had to have your laptop open though, and occasionally run into timeout issues and other things. With Cloud Runner, you're just gonna schedule it and review the results. You're gonna see a lot of green, be happy. Um, it'll be great. and if there are any reds, then you'll be able to then dig into it. Uh, so the failures, again, you'll see the log. This These two steps or these two uh, tests failed, right? Th this step failed, which caused this test to fail, which caused this suite to fail. But you'll be able to get to that really quickly. And then generally what I'll do is debug that test and watch it interactively go. So I'll watch what, what is breaking. Um, and then I can go figure out, is it is it supposed to do that or not, right? Sometimes when you get a, a failure, we use the word failure, which is not, I don't like it myself. It's we did, we noticed a, a change in behavior, 
And then it's up to me to look at it to decide, decide is that change of behavior desired or not? Um, if it's, you know, I can't submit the form anymore, probably not. But if I can't submit the form anymore because a, re a new required field is missing, well, that's actually correct. I need to update my test. Um, so I'll do that. But the running of my thousand regression tests overnight is not something I'm going to be there for. It's going to run while I'm sleeping. Yeah. And, and, and one also interesting addition also is, um, once you have the, the test generator and cloud runner installed or activated, um, once when you go to sh um schedule test, automatically by default you would see run it in cloud runner or run it in cloud. So basically, we're saying, oh, if you want to run it, if you want to schedule your test, it's best you run it on cloud runner because you don't have to be there or you don't have to just wait by a computer to have it run. Okay, so um, I think I can go to the next demo now. So um, this demo is for performance testing, um, also run on Cloud Runner. So um, we're gonna start right now. It's a quick demo of the performance testing tool in ATF coming up in the Washington release. So here I have a uh, demo instance uh, running Washington release. Um, the main focus of the tool is to help customers find performance regressions, especially earlier in their development cycle. Um, a lot of times uh, performance is an afterthought when, when doing development and a lot of the issues arise once they uh, hit production. So this tool aims to help customers find those regressions sooner in their development cycle, making use of all the, the great things that ATF offers already. Go ahead and click uh, Cloud Runner and accept the acknowledgement that uh, we will be pausing the instance for the duration of the test. Uh, this is gonna happen if you run a test, a suite or a schedule. Uh, so it's the same for all type of performance tests. When I hit Run Test, the instance will pause and it will give a 10 minute cooldown period to allow any uh, jobs to, to finish executing and also to allow the memory and, and the, the instance to go back to a steady state before starting the tests. Um, I have disabled that for demo purposes for now, but in a actual instance, that would be the case. So once you hit run test, we issue a system pause and we wait for a cooldown of 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and click run. You'll see a total of 11 runs in here. So the very first one is a warm up run and 10 sequential runs. So all of these execute sequentially. Actually, the warm up run is so that we do any server side caching um, so that we warm up the cache basically on the server side so that. So actual runs, run through one through 10, um, have a better uh, cache localization. And again, this is all in efforts to stabilize the results. So I'm gonna let this run, but I'm gonna skip forward in the video so that we get to the result. This run is done here. Again, just to recap, we pause the system, we waited for about 10 minutes for the instance to cool down for the cooldown period, basically. Now uh, we ran one warm up and 10 runs. So all of these execute sequentially. And now we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and click go to result. And this is going to take me to a new table uh, introduced with this, with this feature. This is called the performance run table. Very simple table. It basically just acts as a container for all our runs here. So we have a total of 11 runs. You can see this one's marked as a warm up, and the step results here. Now you'll see one right here and uh, a link as well as here to, to uh, the UI actions to compare the performance results. So this is the part where it's the most useful for customers. So once we have performance runs and we wanna compare them, I can go ahead and do that. So I can compare a test against uh, another test, right? So the same test. Uh, or I can also compare a suite versus a suite or a suite against the test, as long as that test also exists in the suite. So for this demo, I'm just going to compare to a previous run that I had done. So I'm going to click here. You're prompted with this model here. I'm going to select it uh, from the same test right here. So I'm, I'm going to select from test, but a, a previous run that I had done for basic UI tests. I'll go ahead and click that, and I'm going to click OK. Now, this is going to take me to this new form called Performance Comparison. So once you have uh, multiple runs, you can always navigate to the run and to the performance run and click the Compare button, 
but you can also find that under performance profiling in ATF. Uh, you'll see basically an entry for both of those new two tables. So the performance runs themselves or a performance comparison. So you can also create a performance comparison by just clicking new here and selecting your runs. Um, but from a UX perspective, it's probably easier if you're already at a, in a performance run to just hit that. I think we have a couple of questions for that. So if you do have any questions, feel free, feel free to drop those into the Q&A panel. We'll get those answered. Anything related to uh, test, uh, the performance testing, uh, test generation, cloud runner, anything having to do with ATF. Um, we'll answer those. If not, we'll wrap up a couple minutes early. I do want to thank you for your, your time and questions. We had a couple of great questions coming in. There were quite a few great questions and a very active chat. Thank you very much. Um, and again, noted uh, about the request for the regression. Uh, about about a uh, sorry recorder about a test recorder for ATF. We'll take that feedback back. A few other questions about a roadmap and what we're going to handle in test generation. And these are great sessions. I appreciate you coming and sharing your thoughts and what is important to you. Um, we may uh, try to follow up with you on some of these. And uh, a question did come in. Yinky, can you see the question in the Q and A about the okay. UI test? We're not sure if I missed it, but what kind of Things are included in performance basic UI test. Um, I, I think can we have more details about what this question is? So yeah, if you can give us some examples in that one, uh, Kristen will will try to answer that one. Yeah. Uh, next question, Yankin, do you know? I, I I was trying to answer this in the chat, but I was I wasn't sure. Do we have? Do we know when we have scheduled or what we're planning for? Um, service portal i guess it service portal test generation we have test generation for the catalog item um, but i don't think that's actually in the portal that's just the catalog item by itself uh, through the through, through core ui yeah, so, um, service portal test generation backlog so we're, we're looking at um having that in the next two releases we're looking at having it in yokohama um saveable notice so uh we we are trying to also get all the requirements and understand what customers really want from this, but we're looking at having that come out in Yokohama. Great. So we're looking to expand what's going on. Um, the uh, uh, another uh, question came in about Cloud Runner for each instance and the lanes. Uh, can you explain how the lanes work? If I if I have four instances, um, do I need to buy four? To get started, do I need to buy uh, four ATF packs or how, how does that work? Okay, so if you have four instances and you want to run Cloud Runner on all those four instances, all you have to do is just go to the store, install Cloud Runner on each of those four instances. So what that gives you is eight, eight lanes or two lanes per instance, basically. And if you need if you need more, more lanes to run your tests, you can get additional five lanes per pack. So what we're saying is, each instance comes by default with two lanes. Yeah, so so there, to get started, every instance has two two lanes ready to go, uh, no charge. Those are those are ready to go. Use those if you are maxing them out. If it is taking you, if you're running your full set of regression tests and it's taking twelve hours a day to run your regression tests, then we should look at adding some new lanes uh, on what comes through. But uh, for most of us, especially when we're getting started. Two lanes per instance is, is more than adequate to get through. It'll take a few minutes. It, the alternative today is that I run these tests manually in my browser and I'm running them single threaded. Uh, you can only run, as a user, a single user, you can only run one set of tests at a time. Cloud Runner is doubling that and they don't have to take a break to go get some coffee. Um, so Cloud Runner is going to put you in better shape than you are today, uh, particularly because I can run it overnight and it can just kick it off at two in the morning and run through my tests and have them ready when I come in at, at, at eight. Um, so use it. And then if you're maxing it out, let the, then let's talk about it. But you don't need to buy anything to get started. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I think Christian also responded to a previous question. So um, the, the basic UI test you saw that we ran the performance test on um, was just one of our tests, our tests within ATA. And it, it has a couple of test steps. So within those test steps, we 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 have a test step that add um to validate a particular component. So it's the basic UI test you saw was just one of our um test steps within ATF. Um 
when you say underlying activities within, we the the changes that happened was that one of the components we I think we added a new image in the component and that increased the delay or that increased the time for the test to be run. So um regardless the, the basic UI test is just our own test step. It's just our own test. It does not it's it's not um it's not unique or it's not it's, you you won't find it in yours unless you have something like that. I think that that should answer that question. So it's I, I don't think there's there's any underlying activities that can explain concerning basic UI test. So I think there's another one. What is the timeline on Cloud Runner plugin not breaking inbound scripted REST API? If I'm not using certificate based pods. Okay. Now this is interesting. I think we need more insight into this also. Well, Adam, do, do you well, you have I, I actually I, I don't know that one. Uh, we'd have to follow up on that. If I'm assuming that if there's a case and a PRP, we could we could take a look at what's going on, but I'm not I'm not sure why it would be breaking with that. Um, or what cloud I have some ideas of what's coming on uh, but uh, uh, we'd have to look at that inside of a case of what's going on but I, I'm not aware of yeah the timeline for that specifically um hey another comment came in in the chat that I, I want to make sure we address too um and the, the comment was when tests tests are successful is it possible to send the update sets to prod so I I definitely recommend that when you're once you have your tests don't keep them off in la la land put them in prod, get them into your app repo, get them into source control, um, get them into prod. So when you clone, they come through. The test results, we don't move up today. The test results are probably are going to go away when you clone. You're going to get rid of them. They're just helping us make some progress. Um, if you need to retain your test results uh, indefinitely and you have clones, then we, we need to address that and make sure that the retention periods are there. Um, the test runs have a table cleaner, so they do clean themselves on, on, on all the instances eventually. But the tests themselves, whether you're uh, the test themselves, I want to get them in prod. Test generated tests, I'm probably not going to put in prod because when I clone over, I'm going to want to regenerate. I mean, a clone event means I'm getting I'm doing a clone because I'm getting new data and I want to regenerate. So my test generated tests, I probably will throw away and not move to prod. Anything, any other ATF tests, I am probably going to move to prod so that they are retained over a clone. Um, I, I've seen some people who just keep their tests and update sets and and load them in after a clone. Um, I I don't see the value in that. I would just again make them part of my app, send them in my app repo, uh, have them go, make sure they get into prod, whatever the case is. So when I clone down, I I have my tests ready to go. Um, and for, for for performance tests, does it identify which business rule or where the logic, I mean, let's think business rule or flow or something that's going on. Does it identify which one it is or does it just say this test take took longer? Yeah, it does. It does like, it gives you like a pinpoint location of where the, the delay is coming from or where the, the, the issue is coming from. So it, it does give you the particular test steps, tells you, okay, this is a component that might be causing the delay. So it gives you like an, an interesting deep dive into the issue. Right, which is why which is why we have it go run on Cloud Runner so that we eliminate network issues or network latency and variance. And it also, um, it's why we try to quiesce the system, right? When nothing else is running. So that in the in the real world today, testing is quite difficult, performance, getting a performance test because what else is going on? So that the performance tests are, are designed to try to eliminate as many other factors as possible and highlight where we might have a potential problem. Um, it, I, I don't believe it's going to catch 100% of our problems because some there might be some interaction with something else that's going on, right? Somebody else's script might be using your resources for what comes through, um, but it, it's going to give us a lot more insight and pinpoints, help us alleviate the simple errors. Right, and as we as that gets smarter, as everything else gets better, we'll we'll improve it. Um, but it's going to give us something where we've had nothing before, and give you something to look at and focus on, and make sure that we're we're not having any unforced errors go out. Yeah. Um, and then as uh, the, the follow up to the update sets, um, update sets moving automatically is not something that I would see us doing because I don't want to ever mess with your prod. 
uh, even though that would probably be safe to do and you could do it, um, it I would want somebody approving it or or some some workflow to make sure it's okay. Um, we're not talking about it today in our roadmap um, as we go through, but there is um, a lot of of thought being put on about how does ATF and how do many other things how should they operate through our instance stacks today? Our instances are very isolated. Prod doesn't know about its sub prods. Uh, the sub prod doesn't know about its prod. But especially in the in the in the use cases we're talking about, well, I want to make, I want to ensure I've tested on a sub prod, and then and then the code can move to prod. The test might move up. I want to see my test results um, moving uh, in prod, right? I want my test results retained in prod, even though the test ran on the sub prod. We're putting a lot of um, thought and design in how do we better handle those use cases? How do we better support that? Um, so those are some of the areas we're investing in. So we'll see, hopefully, see some improvements in that um, in in the in future releases. Yeah, um, and it's something in basically with DevOps, as Paul you commented about DevOps. Yeah, how how do we handle that? It's similar into our if you're familiar with App Engine Management Center and pipelines for App Engine. How does that concept? How do we expand that concept to handle more of the use cases about about DevOps, moving things up and down, understanding. Um, uh, my my pipelines where things come through again. Tests are important. Updates are important as well. I don't want to I don't want to activate a plugin in prod that I have not activated in a sub prod. At least we want to be really clear about that because that's a really important step. Uh, so a lot of thought and investment going in that, and we'll and hopefully see some of that come to fruition in the next few releases. All right. Um, Okay, I think we've answered all the questions that are in the Q&A. Um, and with that, I think we have a, a couple minutes. So I think we're gonna wrap up just a few early, give you a chance to get some coffee before your next meeting. Oh, let's, Yink has a few more resources. So I'll let Yink wrap up. Yeah, so um, if you want to follow in with your, your knowledge on ATF, we have um, free on demand courses on now learning. So ATF Essentials. Then also, I, I think also we have a couple of um, blogs and articles on service now community. We're always trying to update this as much as possible, give you more content. And um, with this, you can also ramp up your knowledge on ATF. And also, um, we have a couple of other academies, Analytics Academy, Mobile Academy, Next Experience, and AI Academy. So you can go go look at all these resources and help yourself ramp up your, your knowledge of um all these um, different areas. Okay. Um, I think we'll, sorry. Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll wrap up that this recording will get posted in the community. Um, it may be a week and a half from now, but we'll get the session up there. We'll get a PDF, of the slides for you. Um, and Yinka has also been working on some other great content out there to showcase some of, of the demos and things and the features we've talked about. So a little bit greater, smaller pieces for you. Um, and there was an ask about getting this link out. Um, I'm going to grab that really quickly. The link for the training. Okay. Is, is, uh, oh, sorry. The link for the getting started, which of everything I'm putting at in the chat now, if I can figure out how to cut and paste. Um, there is the the center of expertise. Um, so the, I think if we go to the, the next slide with the community post, that has the link to the training. The training get all of the service now training and now learning gets updated uh, when needed, but every release or two. So be careful about bookmarking a specific course because that course may get updated. Um, this one I think does need a little bit of an update. And the updates for Washington um, generally are gonna come out in April. They come out uh, normally about 30 to 60 days after the GA release. That's when the courses get updated. Um, but this course is available now. Um, the I'm not sure if we have an update planned or not, actually for Washington, but it's always best to just go to now learning and search for automated test framework. Then you'll always make sure you're getting the latest one rather than bookmarking this one and having an updated one that, that you miss. And that's true for ATF, for analytics, for workflows, uh, for workspaces, whatever, whatever the case may be. Just go to now learning and search. Um, and uh, I believe we also have some labs at K24, which we didn't put our plugin, our general plugin for that. But if you're at uh, K24, um, there'll be some sessions on ATF um, and we're happy to talk to you about it there live as well. Thank All you. right, Yinka, do you have anything else that, to add? 
Oh, I think that'll be all for now. Thank you for attending this session and we hope to see you in the next academic session later in April. All right. Thank you for joining. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.